Hello everyone. Today I would like to speak on the topic multidimensional data model. Uh, data warehouses and OLAP tools are usually based on a multidimensional data model. And this multidimensional data model can be viewed in the form of a data cube. First, let us know what is meant by data cube. A data cube, which is a multidimensional data model, allows data to be viewed in multiple dimensions. Data cube is usually defined by dimensions and facts. Dimensions are the entities about which we are interested to keep the records. Each dimension might contain a table associated with it called as dimension table. And this dimension table gives further information regarding a particular dimension. Facts are numeric measures. They can be also called as quantities which helps us to analyze the relationships between the dimensions. A multidimensional data model is usually organized around a central theme and this central theme is represented by a fact table. A fact table contains the names of the facts or measures and it also contains the keys to each of the related dimension tables. So here is an example on the screen which give you an idea regarding the fact and dimension tables. So here you can observe that uh, there is a fact table which consists of different keys such as time key, product key, store key and customer key which indicates the different dimension tables and also it consists of facts or measures such as order dollars and quantity sold. Just consider the store key. So this key is indicating or it is relating to the dimension table store which is giving further information regarding the dimension store such as city, store name and phone number. The data cube in a data warehouse is n-dimensional. So let us consider a two-dimensional data. A two-dimensional data can be viewed in the form of a table. So let us look upon an example which is representing a two-dimensional data. So here you can observe uh, in this particular data there are two dimensions. So one is time which has been expressed in terms of quarters that is Q1, Q2, Q3 and Q4 and another dimension is the item types which has been expressed in terms of home entertainment, computer, phone and security. And the numerical measures which you can observe on the screen, so they represent the dollars sold in thousands. And this data, it belongs to the location van cover. So this is how a two dimensional data can be represented in the form of a table. Now. Let us move on to a three dimensional data. So in order to move on to a three dimensional data, a third dimension has to be introduced. And one more important thing to be noted is that a three dimensional data can be, can be viewed in the form of a data cube. So let us consider the same example. And in this example, a third dimension has been introduced, which is the dimension location that consists of Chicago, New York, Toronto and Vancouver. So this three dimensional data can be represented in the form of a data cube like this. So one important thing to be noted is that a data cube, it doesn't store the detailed information. It usually summarizes the data and each cell in a data cube, it stores some aggregate or summarized measure. Now let us move on to the four dimensional data. So this four dimensional data can be viewed as a series of three dimensional data cubes. So let us look, look upon an example representing the four dimensional data cube. So here, so we are considering the same previous example, but here the fourth dimension is getting introduced and the dimension is supplier, which consists of three types, supplier one, supplier two and supplier three. So here on the screen, you can see that how a four dimensional data cube is displayed as a series of three dimensional data cubes. Hence, we can say that any n dimensional data can be displayed as a series of n minus 1 dimensional data cubes. Now, let us discuss about different types of schemas for multidimensional data models. So before that, first let us know what is meant by schema. Schema is a collection of related database object. A typical example for a database object is a table. Schema can be also called as a structure behind the organization of data. It is the logical description of the entire database. A database schema consists of a set of entities and the relationships between them. 
A multi-dimensional data model in a data warehouse can exist in the form of different types of schemas such as star schema or snowflake schema or fact constellation schema. First, let us discuss about star schema. Star schema is the most commonly used schema. It contains a large central table called as the fact table which contains the bulk of the data with no data redundancy. It also contains a set of smaller attendant tables called as dimension tables, one for each dimension. So here we have come across a concept called as data redundancy. Data redundancy is nothing but the data getting repeated unnecessarily in one or more records or fields or tables. Here each dimension is represented by only one table called as dimension table which gives further information regarding that particular dimension. Star schema, it resembles the shape of a star with points radiating from the center. So we can see an example for a star schema. So here in this example on the screen, you can observe that there is a single fact table which is located at the center, which is shared by, which shares many dimension tables, one for each dimension. Let us look upon another example that that is representing star schema. So here in this example, you can observe that there is a single fact table which is located at the center. And this fact table consists of different keys such as time key, item key, branch key and location key. And it also consists of facts such as dollars sold and units sold. So if, uh, if we consider the item key, so you can observe that the item key is indicating the dimension table item which is giving further information regarding the dimension item such as item name, brand, type and supplier type. Now let us move on to the snowflake schema. Snowflake schema is similar to star schema since it contains a single fact table located at the center. The only difference between the snowflake schema and the star schema is the concept of normalization. Normalization splits the data into additional tables and the concept of normalization is introduced in order to reduce the data redundancy. Hence, in a snowflake schema, the dimension tables can be split into additional dimension tables. So since the data redundancy is reduced, the snowflake schema helps us to save the storage space. But the system performance might get adversely impacted since more joins will be required to execute a query. The snowflake schema graph resembles the shape of a snowflake. So here we can see an example for a snowflake schema. So from this uh, particular example on the screen, we can say that the snowflake schema resembles the shape of a snowflake. Let us look upon uh, another example which is representing the snowflake schema. So here you can observe that there is a single fact table which is located at the center. Uh, and which is sharing many dimension tables and also you can observe that the dimension table item is being normalized that is uh, it is split up into a dimension table supplier which is giving uh, further information regarding the dimension supplier and similarly the dimension table location is getting split up into an additional dimension table city which is giving further information about the dimension city. Now the last kind of schema is the fact constellation schema. Fact constellation schema is also called as galaxy schema. And this schema is more complex than star schema and snowflake schema since it contains multiple fact tables that shares many dimension tables. So this kind of schema is being used by sophisticated applications. And this schema can be viewed as a collection of stars. So, let us look at an example which is representing the fact constellation schema. So in this particular example on the screen, you can observe that this schema consists of two facts.